Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another video on my, on my channel. We are we are actually, um, this is going to be the first episode in my Microsoft VDI uh, series. So um, I did a bit of a, did a season, season series intro uh, last episode where I've kind of spoke about what I'll be covering and, and sort of how I'm going to break it down. Um, I also did a little bit of a demo at the end about Windows app and just showed what that is and I can use it and the benefits of it. We're going to be using Windows app throughout this, throughout all these demos. Well, not throughout all the demos, when we start connecting and, and showing, you know, all the different features of, of the, the VDI and the Microsoft. Today, however, we're going to start off by talking about the first VDI solution that Microsoft, the, the, well, the first one I want to talk about, they offer three main ones. And it is DevBox, so let's get started with this episode. So this is my Microsoft VDI series, and as I mentioned today, we're going to be talking about Microsoft DevBox. So, um, what it cover the two main areas we're going to cover in this episode is what is Microsoft DevBox, uh, some of the scenarios for Microsoft DevBox, and we'll do a bit of a demo. We're going to create the DevBox Center, um, and we're, uh, basically the, throughout the DevBox uh, uh, sort of um, videos, we're just going to go through the DevBox deployment, and also do different aspects, different features of the solution. So. Let's answer that question first. What is Microsoft DevBox? So Microsoft DevBox gives developers a self-service access to ready-to-code uh, cloud workstations. These are called DevBoxes. And you can configure DevBoxes with, with tools, um, source code, and pre-built binaries that are specific to a project. Uh, so developers can immediately start working. You can create your own sort of customized images as well. We will be looking how to do that. As or use sort of pre-configured images from the Azure Marketplace, which we'll be looking at as well. And you can complete these with sort of Visual Studio or already installed. Uh, if you are a developer, you can use multiple dev boxes in your day-to-day -day workflows. So you can access your dev boxes through a remote desktop client, like the Windows app, which we saw, or via a web browser, like any sort of virtual desktop. Uh, so we'll talk about three main use cases for, for DevBox specifically. Um, we've first got the, the, well, you can see we've got three here, platform engineers, uh, dev team leads and, and developers. So first we have platform engineers. So platform engineers and, and sort of IT admins work together to provide developer infrastructure and tools to sort of development teams. Platform engineers are going to set and manage security settings, network configurations, and organizational policies to ensure that their boxes can access resources securely. In this scenario, you can manage their boxes via Intune and Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And again, we'll be looking at that throughout the sort of um, throughout the demos as well later on as the series goes on. From a developer team lead perspective, developer team leads are sort of experienced developers who have in-depth knowledge of their projects. They can be assigned the sort of dev center project admin role and we're sort of creating and managing the development experience. Project admins can create and manage pools of dev boxes and we're going to show you how to do that in the demos. In this scenario, you create pools of dev boxes tailored to developers' projects and tasks. Uh, and then members of the sort of development, then finally we have developers, sorry. so members of the development team are assigned the dev center dev box user role. Uh, and they can self-serve uh, one or more dev boxes on demand from the sort of uh, dev pools that are enabled for a project. And dev box users can work on multiple projects or tasks by creating multiple dev boxes. And in this scenario, you are deploying the dev box we need to work on their tasks and projects. Microsoft DevBox bridges the gap between development teams and IT by bringing control of project resources closer to the development team. Uh, now I just want to talk about a bit more, I want to go into a bit more detail now about these different sort of scenarios. So first we have that platform engineer scenario. So DevBox helps platform engineering teams provide the appropriate DevBoxes to each user's workloads. So platform engineers can create DevBox pools and appropriate DevBox definitions and assign access for only sort of the DevBox users who are working in those specific projects. They can control costs by using auto, auto stop schedules. It can define network configuration, which determines the region where the dev box is created. And they can assign the built-in dev box user role to grant access to development teams and enable them to self-serve um, dev boxes. 
So let's look at the IT admin scenario now. So DevBox has multiple benefits for IT admins, um, including you know you can manage DevBoxes like any other sort of device on your network essentially. So DevBoxes can aut automatically enroll to Intune. Uh, this can use the Microsoft Intune um, admin center to manage those DevBoxes. You can keep all your Windows devices up to date as well by using the expedited quality updates to deploy zero day patches across your organization. If a dead box is compromised, you can isolate it while using, you know, getting users back up and running on, on a new dead box instance. Uh, as well as, as those, you can also, you know, dead box provides secure access in sort of secure environments as well. So access controls in Microsoft Ontario ID, organize access by project or user type. You can join dead boxes natively to Ontario ID or even to Active Directory domains. You can set conditional access policies uh, that require users to connect via compliant device. You can require MFA. You can also configure risk-based uh, sign-in policies for dead boxes, access sensitive source code, uh, or even customer data. So let's talk a little bit about that developer team lead scenario now. Uh, so after a developer team lead is assigned the dev center project admin role, they can help manage the project. And then project admins can then create dev box pools and add appropriate dev box definitions and control costs by using the auto stop schedule. And they can use configuration scripts that can invoke sort of setup tasks from a catalog attached to the dev center. And this setup uh, sort of task excludes during the creation of the dev box to install the customized software specific in that particular project. Before we jump into the demo, let's talk about that. Well, the most obvious one, which is that developer scenario. Uh, so an organization that has globally distributed development teams can configure DevBox to enable developers to create their own sort of dev boxes in the sort of closest region. Developers can create dev boxes as needed without waiting for the IT team, the IT admin team. Users can access dev boxes from any device and from any operating system as well. DevBox supports developers who are working on multiple projects. Developers can create and use separate dev boxes for separate workloads, projects or tasks. Developers can, can create multiple dev boxes from a predefined pool whenever they need them and, and, and then delete those dev boxes when they're done. Organizations even define dev boxes for various roles on a team. So you might configure standard dev boxes uh, with admin rights to give full developers greater control or full time developers greater control while applying more restricted permissions for, for contractors. And finally, dev boxes. Uh, use a DSV5 series of virtual machines, which have sufficient vCPUs and memory to meet requirements associated with most general purpose workloads. Uh, and for storage, their boxes use sort of Azure premium SSDs, which are going to deliver that high performance and low latency support. Um, so what I'd like to do now is we're going to jump into a demo. And we're going to start off by creating a dev center, basically. That's like the and we're going to talk about the architecture in the upcoming episodes, but we're going to create what's called the dev center. So without further ado, join me in the demo. So here we are in the Azure portal. And um, I know, so you might be asking what, what's a dev center. So we are going to talk about the architectures. I will explain dev center in the next couple of episodes. So please do bear with me. But I just wanted to show the process, first process of creating and starting to create your dev boxes. So in Azure, you can just go to the search here and just type in dev and it'll come up with dev centers. So this is essentially the, the, the first thing you need. So you create a dev, this is going to like to centrally manage your images, your workstation sizes and your environment templates. So we need to go to create here. Again, standard subscription in, your resource group. So I should have a dev box RG already set up and give it a name. So I am, oh, I am IT geek, hyphen DC, well, let's call it dev. Uh, it's quite that, okay. And then your location. So again, depending on where you are in the world, um, I'm going to pick UK South. And now we've got a couple options here. We can either, you know, we can select as your development deployment environment definitions. Um, and it does it does recommend having attached quick start catalogs, or we can even use DevBox customized task if we use that. Um, you know, you just have to make sure you understand that Quick Start Catalog will allow developers to customize their dev box with PowerShell commands. Purpose of the demo, so I'll leave it as is. Then we go to settings. So here's where we can look at catalogs. So resources from catalogs attached to Dev Center are available to all projects within it. When enable catalogs can also attach to specific projects. So when I enable catalogs per project, 
And from a Microsoft DevOps perspective, so we've got options here, we can either disable or enable the Microsoft hosted networking projects. So this is for the easiest experience, configuration experience. So we're gonna leave that enabled. But also having that Azure Monitor Agent installed on the dev boxes as well, so we can monitor them. We wanna leave that enabled as well. Tag, set up any tags you might want for the purpose of the demo, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, once validation is passed, we'll go to create. Now once this is created, I'm gonna go into the dev center and show you some of the options um, for the finish, for the end of the uh, video. So uh, let's just let that finish, it might take a couple of minutes. Okay, so that deployment's completed. It took around, well, what time did it start? It took about three, three, four minutes, not too bad. So I'm gonna go back into Dev Center again, and there it is. So once we go into Dev Center, this is where we're gonna be able to create all our other resources. So we'll go into settings, we'll create our identity integration if we want. We'll create our Dev Center settings here. Um, we'll go into Dev Center, Dev Box configuration, we'll create our networking, our compute galleries, our catalogs, we've got our projects here. So we're going to create all this um, throughout the different episodes. Obviously, right now, this is all I kind of want to cover, how to create a dev center in this demo. So that is episode one in the bag. Um, I'm really, really, I'm, I'm already enjoying this. I'm, I've enjoyed the preparation that I've been putting in, you know, all the sort of the slide decks and all the, you know, actually playing about with dev box and dev center. So I'm, I'm going back to my original passion, which was VDI. So I'm really enjoying the series. Um, I'm looking forward to what I've got in store. Drop me a comment if you're enjoying the series and what you're learning from it. If you've got any questions, you know, let's spark a bit of debate around some of the use cases for, for DevBox and, and you know where people think it might have a have a place in the industry and, and, and you know within within the world, let's say. Um, so even if you're a developer and you, you, you kind of you've not used it before, you're looking to use it, you drop me a comment, drop me it, drop me you know, get me on my, my LinkedIn or my Twitter. I'll put my, my socials in the description as well. Some useful links as well to all the different Microsoft Learn areas for, for these topics. So thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, goodbye.